of Proverbs. Why did we go Proverbs? For the wisdom to be able to hold on to the supernatural success that God is going to place in this house. Amen. Amen. So when you have the book of Proverbs chapter 16, and I'm only going to read one verse. When you find Proverbs 16, please stand to your feet. I'm going to read from the Amplified today. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. Amen, 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 amen. It's interesting what, what God is doing here and what God is saying to us today. Professor Wendy. Helper. 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 What God is saying to us, he's given us, he's given us some insight and he's given us some wisdom. You know, God, I told you last week, God ain't afraid of you having stuff. God is not afraid of you having things. But we, we have to put what, what he's saying into perspective over our life. God is going to do something that's going to release his call and, and his presence in our life. He's going to put a, a, a greater anointing on those that's understanding what he's doing and that and that want to receive what he's doing. But you got to understand it and you got to want it. And you got to hunger and thirst after what God is doing for you. It, <clears throat> it's time out for playing church and doing things that, that just, to just get by. We can't just get by in the things that God has for us. God is establishing his will and his way in us. But we got to let go of our will so his way can be placed in us. So as soon as we let go of our will and let the will of God work in us, we're going to be able to move in that supernatural success that God is talking to us and placing in our hearts. Is in placing in our hearts. So I told you Proverbs Chapter 16, and I'm going to read verse 9, and I told you I'm coming from the Amplified. I want to highlight what God is saying to us a little bit more. Amen? Amen. A man's mind plans his way as the purpose as he, as he journeys through life. Let me read that again. I'm trying to put something else in here. A man's mind plans his ways. As he journeys through life. But the Lord directs his steps. And establish them. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. A man's mind plans his ways. Pastor Wendy. Sister Joan. You plan your ways. Gene. You, you, Sister Jean, you plan your ways. You think about what you want to do. God is not afraid or intimidated with you planning what you want to do. But watch, the subject title of this is, When God Interrupts. And that's just the title. When God Interrupts. Let me, let me endeavor to take that far. When God Interrupts Your Plans, What You Gonna Do? It, 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 it's easy to say that now, but you have a journey that you want to go. You want to do this and you want to do that. But when God interrupts, what are we going to do? Naturally, we, we, we don't like change. We don't want to do something different. We want to do what we want to do. Why? Because we want to be in control. We want to control everything and uh, every aspect of our life. But if we understand the God that we serve, we really don't control nothing. Amen. It's all God. It's all God. So watch this. He said, it, there's two plans at work. It's our plan, which is man's plan. And then it is the Lord's plan. So this verse is showing us that two plans are taking place. Once again, it says, a man's mind plans his way. So God is not, he's not intimidated when you plan your ways. 
But he, what, he, what he wants to take place is, watch this, the scripture says, in all you're getting, get an understanding. And it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So when you planning, are you seeking the kingdom of God? And all his righteousness will be added unto us. But we want to plan our way, brother prince. We want to do it because it's, it's okay for us to do it that way. Because I'm in control. And, and that's our biggest thing. We want to be in total control of every aspect of our life. But as soon as you said that you want to serve God, your control is really gone. You don't control anything about your life anymore. It's God. And when you understand that God is controlling your life, you're going to understand how this supernatural success is going to fall upon you. Amen. Because watch, God is controlling and ordaining what you do. God is in control. If we let our will go, we got to surrender our will. Not my will, but your will be done, Lord. How many of us said that? Just to be saying it. We say it because we hear it. But do we truly live this? Not my will be done, but your will be done, Lord. Amen. And what? This is the key. On earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> so, hey, hey bro, Prince. On earth as it is in heaven. Do we truly understand or do we phantom what's taking place in heaven? Not struggling in heaven. Amen. Streets have paved the gold. No more sickness. No more diseases. Amen. So if he's saying that, not my will, but thy will be done on earth as it is. So we can have this on earth if we surrender our will. Mm -hmm. Do you understand or are you lining your life up with the will of God as it is in heaven? As you walk this earth, it's that simple. We line our steps up with the will of God. Whatever we do is going to be done in heaven. It's done in heaven when we do that. But we want to fight our battle. We want to fight. We want, it's like the, uh, uh, bumping our head up against the wall. It, we keep bumping our head in, in the night. We keep stumbling because we don't want to let go of our will and that's all it is if we're not letting go of our will we want to control everything in every aspect of our life but I can't control it if I say not my will but your will be done Lord so now you now you now you've been that unstable person and, and, and weary in all your ways because now you 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 neither hot nor cold. You 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 doing things that you want to do because you don't understand. Un unfa un uh, what I want to say. What's that thing that 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 uh, straddling the fence? Because you trying to work your will, but you're trying to let God have His perfect will. But see, we can't do these things if we want to have supernatural success in our life. We got to let go of our will and let God. We got to let it go. This verse shows us that the human ability to forecast a future that does not yet exist. Let's look at it again. It says a man's mind plans his ways. So watch. Your mind or our ability is us forecasting something that, not, that has not yet existed in our lives. Because we're lining up with the will of God. So we can forecast it out. Because watch. What a man think is in his heart, so is he. So the words that you speak take form. I'm speaking ahead of where I am. Where I am. Do you understand that? I'm speaking from a standpoint of now, right where I am, but I'm speaking ahead of now. Do you understand? So I'm speaking right here, but in actuality, I'm forecasting it further ahead from right here. Because I'm lining up with my will with the will of God. So no more sickness, no more poverty. I'm speaking these things. 
I have a mind of Christ. So watch. I'm forecasting what, what I'm going to walk into in the future because I'm lining up. God does not have a problem with you trying to forecast it. But watch what you're going to do when he changed. What you forecast it over your life. Write the vision, make it plain. Okay, I wrote the vision, Lord, and I made it plain. But when I started doing it, you changed it. What you going to do? What are you going to do? When he comes, when God interrupts your happy, goal, your happy, happy, joyous life, what you going to do when God changes the thing on you? What are you going to do when he interrupts it? See, we, we, we don't understand it. We can't fathom what takes place. Why, why do people die? Why do people move in and out of our lives? Do you really understand? What, that's interruption. That's true. You plan, you plan to, to have this all your life. I plan to be married to her to the day I die. But what if he interrupts that? What we going to do? Blame God then? Not understanding his purpose in our lives or what's going to take place? Because all glory belongs to who? So when he interrupts, is all the glory still his? Or do we get mad at him? Come on, we got to get the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding. What's his, what is purposed in our lives? All glory belongs to him. You meant to uh, dream big. You're meant to dream big as you want. And watch this, you meant to plan big. God ain't a, he's not afraid of your dreaming big. He's not afraid of you to plan big. But line it up. Line upon line, precept upon precept of what the word is saying to you. Because remember, his promises is already, is, is yes and amen. And it's already bigger than what you can ever think or imagine out of your own mind. Stop dreaming and planning small. You, we, uh, that's our problem. We don't sm serve a small God. We serve a big God. And this is what he's talking about. He's not afraid of us to do this. Yet, look, he doesn't mind us planning big or dreaming big because we're not autonomous or sovereign people. Do we understand autonomous? It's, it's not, the meaning of it is totally, it is not totally free and independent external control. So we're not, we're not totally free from an external control. What is the external control that we're talking about? It's God. God is in control of us if we understand it. He, he's an external source that lives within so he controls us. He's in charge. Mm -hmm. Not your will. Not my will. But whose will? So why do we say that? And then when he, when he brings his will, we go ahead and cry. Why me, God? Why me, God? Stop using scripture if you don't want to follow it. Remember I told you, you're speaking what's taking place. If we say, not my will. There's a planner that is at work in us. My wife, you don't have, what you got in your purse? Where's your calendar? You got your calendar there? <laughs> you, my wife has this planner that she writes everything in. It's almost like this planner is controlling her life. But guess what? God said, I am the planner that is in control of your life. So if I remove your expired, oh, that's good. Your calendar is expired, which my calendar, God says, never expires. I am always with you and I never leave you nor forsake you. What happens? We get attached to things that has an expiration date. 
And God said, I never expire on you. That I'm always with you. And I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Stop attaching yourself to things that has an expiration date. That's not going to do you any good in the plans of God. God is the ultimate planner in our lives. He plans everything out for us. Watch what Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says. And once again, I'm reading to Amplify. It says, for it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work. I like that. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. And like I said, that is to Amplify. He says, for it is not your strength, Pastor Wendy. It is not your strength, Sister Jean. It is not your strength. It is not your strength. It is not your strength. Amen. But it is God who is effectively at work in you. This word effectively, it means no error. It means it is, it is, is right where it needs to be. And it's serving the purpose that it needs to serve in you. So he's effectively serving the work in you. Come on. It's effectively at work in you. Both to will and to work. So it's working in you. If you let it work. A song says, let the word work. So I'm telling you, let God work in you. That it is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose. So not only is it in me, it's strengthening me. As I work out each day. And I, I strengthen my body. God said, each day you pick up his Bible, each day that you read his word, each day that you pray, each day that you fast, each day that you cry out, each day that you declare and decree, it is working in you to strengthen you. That's right. Strengthen you. And, and not only that, not only to strengthen you, but energize you. You thought you was tired, but watch when this word of God get in you. It's going to energize you, and it's going to create in you, and it's going, it's going to give you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose. How many of us walk around saying, I don't know what my purpose is? It's because we don't let the word fulfill us or energize us or let it strengthen us. We're missing a beat because we don't have the word in us. Come on. We've got to get the word in us for his good pleasure. So all this takes place in us. Let me read it without interruption. It says, so for it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work, that is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. Did y'all not hear that last part? For his good pleasure. For his good pleasure. Not my will, his good pleasure. Not my will, his good pleasure. Not my will, his good pleasure. That is working with inside of us. All, we're created to fulfill God's good pleasure in the earth. And he loves you for it. He loves you for it. Each day, I don't know why we don't wake up and say thank you each day. Because each day we wake up, he's showing how much he cared for you. He's showing you how much he loves you. He's showing you how, much, how important you are to his purpose. Each day we wake up. He's showing us these things. He's giving us these things. He's telling us these things. And he's telling you that you that you created to fulfill his purpose. Do, do, do you can, how can you ever denounce that you're not anybody if you understand what God is doing in you? He's, he's preparing you. He's giving you his purpose. Do you understand this? 
He's given us his purpose. He's created in us <laughs> his purpose. All we got to do is activate his purpose inside of us. Go to the book of Ephesians. God, I thank you. Chapter 1. Verses 22 and 23. I think. Yeah, verses 22 and 23. Watch what it says. <clears throat> 22 and 23. 23. 22 says, And he put all things under his feet and gave him to the head over all things to the church, which he is his body, the fullness of him who fills all all in all. So God said, I've given this church over to Jesus Christ, who fills it with his body. Jesus Christ, he, God has given all things over to him. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, each and every one of us, of us is a thing. And God has given Jesus Christ over to all things. So he's given us over to us. He's giving Jesus Christ over to us. Do we understand this? The planner who is God has, to, has the final pass for what takes place in our lives. God has. You know, you, you look at it's the playoff season that takes place. And if they're, if they're down by four points and the, and the other team has the ball with five seconds less, they want to throw the Hail Mary pass. But God says, guess what? I don't throw Hail Marys at you. He said, my pass is precise and it's going to get to you when I release it from my hand. It's, nobody can stop it. Nobody can interrupt it. He said, I have the final pass over what's going to take place because I'm king of kings and lord of lords. We may plan for one direction, but God has the right to, in, to inter, uh, or interrupt our plan. I've had a lot of plans for Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry. A whole lot of plans for us. And I, I, I was watching them take place. I was watching the plans activate. I was watching the plans move smoothly. But do you know we ran into an interruption? We ran into a big interruption. And, and that interruption was Pastor T, uh, Pastor Archie and Pastor T leaving. I, I, I thought there was the, the, the ultimate part or the ultimate plan for Top of the Mountain to keep moving forward. But they had to leave. They had to go to a new duty assignment. So I'm like, why now, God? I see that we were moving in the right direction. We were, we were doing everything. God said, I had to interrupt your plan. So when they leave, what you going to do? Who are you going to look to when they leave? Or are you going to continue to, to press everything with them? He, God said, you had to look to me, Pastor Campbell. You had to, you had to, to come to me for the source of what, what the ultimate plan. If they leave, are you going to stop preaching? If they leave, are you going to stop teaching? Or if they leave, are you going to stop going out, bringing people in? My plan was interrupted. But God said, my, I interrupt your plan for a better will of me. So whenever God interrupts your plan, God is interrupting your plan for his glory. And we can't cry because God's glory is bigger than whatever we planned. I could have stayed just stuck and said, okay, well, I'm finished. But God said, I got a plan and purpose for Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry. My plan is bigger than what you ever thought was Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry, Pastor Campbell. My plan was bigger, God says than what you had wrote down in your vision for Top of the Mountain. My plan, God is saying, is better. Philippians, um, Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of, his very, of this very thing, amplified once again, that he, that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So God said, watch. 
I've begun a good work in you, Pastor Wendy. Amen. He said, and, and, and I'm not going to leave you incomplete. I'm going to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So God had started a plan in you, Sister Jean. And he said, I'm not incompleting you. I'm completing you until the day of Jesus Christ. Come back. So my plan is going to continue to prosper in your life. And I'm not talking about your money. I'm talking about health. I'm talking about strength. I'm talking about love life. I'm talking about everything. It's not a prosperity message. It's prosperity in your spirit. But I, God said, I've created a plan in you, and I'm not going to stop until it's completed, until the day that Jesus Christ comes. It's He's going to complete it in you. And God said, I'm not a man that I should lie. So if God has given you a promise, he ain't taking it back. We, we divert our, his promise sometimes by us walking out of his will. And that's how we can lose the success. That's by walking out his will. Amen. I want everything that God has in store for everybody in this ministry. I want you to have the supernatural success. I want you to be fulfilled. And I'm going to keep, keep preaching and, and pressing on the way that I do until I start seeing a change in your life through all things that work together for the good. I want to see the good taste place in your life. I want to see, I want to see you debt free. I want to see you successful. I want to see you happy in, in, the, in the good place that God has in store for you. I want to see those things in, in take place in your life. Being, co being confident of these very things. What is these very things? What is the very thing that God said to you? That he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's a promise for God. He said, I began a good work in you. And it's going to be complete. And what? It's going to always be out working in you until the day of Jesus Christ comes. Interrupt means stop the continuous progress of an activity or a process. So watch. God is going to stop or interrupt what you planned for his pur purpose and his process. You're diligently working. How many gardeners we have in here? Only one person like garden? So you know how you're out in that garden and you working? You continuously working to make sure that, that, that the ants don't eat it, the bugs don't eat it, that, that, that nothing takes over, but you continuously doing stuff in there. God said, while you out there working continuously, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to interrupt that process. He said, I'm going to change the direction of the process that you're working on. He said, as you work on that process, I'm going to give you a different direction. And God said, I don't just give you a different direction that you're working on just to do it. God said, I've given us a different direction because my direction is better than the direction that you were going in. That's why he changes. He sees something that just not right in the direction that we're going in. So God said, I have to interrupt your direction. He said, I'm not just doing it to do it. He said, I'm doing it for I can get the glory of, out of your life and what you're doing in your process. Do you understand me? God changes our process to better his kingdom. So if it's better in his kingdom, it's better in our lives. Amen. The process. God is interrupting it to do something different. Because the way that we thought was right is not quite lining up with the process that God had in store for us. The process. He interrupts our plans because he has a greater plan that he wants accomplished. Do I need to say that again? God interrupts our plans because he has a greater plan he wants accomplished out of our lives greater is he 
that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. So he, greater. So we can't work the world's process. Right. We've got to have the greater that's inside of us. Greater is he. How do we as a church cling to God when he interrupts us with his greater plan? How do we as a church? That's a question. How do we as a church cling to God? See, see, most of us will run because we think we're getting punished by God when he changes our process. When he interrupts our goals, we think that, that we're getting punished. But God said, I see something greater that I, want, I have in store for you. I want, I want you to understand the process because I got a greater in you. Oh, put your hand on your chest. Say, I got a greater in me. Come on, say it again. I got a greater in me. Now say it like you mean it. You got a greater in you. You got a greater in you. What? Let's look at this process. Let's look at it. It says, a man's mind plans his ways as he journeys through life. But the Lord directs the steps and establishes them. So I'm planning to, to, to walk out to my car, but God is, he's ordaining my steps and making them greater as I walk because I am submissive to his process and his plan. Amen. I'm allowing the change to take place in my life because there's a greater. You got a greater inside of you that's trying to get out. Just say it. Say greater. greater. Say it like you mean it. Greater. 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 There we go. You got to understand this thing. You know, you know, you only get on the nerves of people that don't have a greater. When you shout out the greater, you only bother those that don't have a greater. Do you understand what I'm saying? They get annoyed because they see your greater, but they upset because they don't have a greater. That's how come your praise, it, it, it affects people around you that don't have nothing in them. Right. That's why I tell you, never let anybody stop your praise. Amen. Don't be quiet on your praise. Right. Let it out because you got a greater in you. Only the ones that, that are going to hate on you, they don't have a greater in them. <laughs> Come on, I, I think that's waking somebody up right now. What you believe when you are interrupted by God will make the difference in his interruption for your life. All right. Do you understand that? Let me say that again. I'm going to slow it down. It says, what you believe, what do you believe right now is the question. What are you believing God for now? What are you believing that God is in your life? What are you believing that he's, what's taking place in your life? What are you believing? Are you believing his word? Are you believing that Bible that's on your lap? Are you believing all the words that's in there? Amen. Is it yes and amen to you? Do you believe that? So watch. What you believe when you are interrupted. What you believe when, you, when you're facing the mountain. What you believe when, when you're facing adversity. What you believe that the word of God saying when turmoil comes against you. What you believe in, in when you're interrupted by God will make the difference in his interpretations for our lives. So whatever you're going through, what you believe of the word of God while you're going through it will make the interpretation of what you're going through from God. All right. What you believe. 
I know it's hard to believe what the word says when I'm going through, but this is why we teach it this way. This is why we try to give you understanding. So when you go through the trials and tribulations of life, you can look at the mountain and say, be ye moved. And I don't have to climb it, but I can speak to the issue. I can speak to the problem. I can tell you to get away because I believe it. The simple truth to God's interruption of our plan is he is at work. He is at work. He's working in us. Brother Prince, he's working. He's working for the good. Let us go to uh, Philippians. <laughs> well, I want to go Philippians, Philippians, Philippians chapter 2. Hmm, thank you, Lord. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. It says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Amen. It is God working in you to do his good pleasure. It is God that's working in you that's right. to do his good pleasure, not to harm you, but to show you how special you are and how, how, how anointed your life is because of his good pleasure. That's what he's doing. This is how, this is why, how you want to know how we find the hope that God is working in us, how we do it? Write these down. Number one, I got three points. Number one, God is always, always fully in control. Amen. Always fully in control. And that's because he's sovereign. He's a sovereign God. And see, the problem with us, we control freaks. And we can't understand the sovereignty of God. We want to have the control. We want to do it our way. We all think that we work at Burger King, bro, Donnie. Have it our way. But God said, I'm in control. Remember, he said, I got the last pass. And it's not a Hail Mary. God is always in control. Uh, go to... Um, Psalms 115. We're going we're gonna to see some of these things. I, gotta, I can't just give it to you. I got to give you spirit, uh, uh, not spirit, but give you the word to go with it so you can keep it in your spirit is what I was trying to say. Psalms 115. And verse 3. But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. See, God that's in heaven does whatever he pleases. Uh, verse 3. God does whatever he pleases. He's in control, brother prince, and he's in heaven. But he does whatever he, uh, whatever he pleases in our lives while we own this earth. It's not us, not our will be done, remember? But God's will, God's will, you keep saying it, we keep repeating it. Not my will, but God's will be done. Not my will, but God's will be done. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, uh, verses 15 and 16 says, Which he will manifest in his own time, he who is blessed and only the King of kings and Lord of lords. Who alone has imm immortality dwelling in un unperishable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. This is talking about Jesus Christ is in control that has everlasting life. Well, I can't control nothing. If I surrender my will to him, I'm not in control of nothing. Jesus Christ has all purpose and all will. 
and all, all, all is in control of everything that my life is. Because watch, watch this. What is at the end of this verse, verse 16, it says, Whom be honor and everlasting power. Do you have immortality that dwells in you? In your flesh, is, it, is your flesh immortality? Immortal? Is it, it can, your flesh lives forever? No, your spirit lives forever when it surrenders to God. Your spirit. Your spirit. Why do we doubt that God is in control? Why do we doubt that? Number two. God always has what he is doing. I'm sorry, God always knows what he is doing. This is one of the things that we say. God, why are you messing up my plans? Why, why, why are you changing my plans, God? But God is always in control of and knows what he's doing. God, surrender it to him. Watch this. It says, God says that, excuse me, it says, we struggle because of the eye that's in us. You know what I'm saying right there, friends? You, how many times you hear people when, when they're doing things, and, and, and watch, and they, and they might be in a group, and they got other help, but they always saying, I did, I did, I did, I, I, I. That's why we struggle, because the eye takes over. That's good. The eye factor takes over the eye that's in us. It, gets, it has a struggle. Can I tell you that we are not the son of God's universe? S-U-N. We're not the son of God's universe. It's him and his S-O-N that is the son of the universe. Do you hear, understand what I'm saying? Hebrews 11 And I'm almost finished. Um, close you out, give you some scriptures as always to sum up what we're talking about. Hebrews 11 and 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. What, look what it's saying to us. Abraham did not hesitate. Abraham, when he was tested by God did what God had ordained him to do without any hesitation. How many of us hesitate when God tells us to do something? When he interrupts our plan? Amen. How many? We got to understand that God's purpose. Go to Acts or write them down. Acts chapter uh, 2 verse 23. And it says, him being delivered by the determined purpose of foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawlessness, hands have crucified and put to death. Jesus Christ, God gave his son. And watch this. He foreknew what was taking place. And he had his, 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 his plan was interrupted to do what God has ordained for him to do for you and I. Jesus was going around ministering to people and let himself be taken by the Sadducees and Pharisees for you and I, for the goodness of God. So what are you going to do? Let's look, look, you look at Genesis 5 and 6, or chapter 5 and 6, I think it is. When you look at that, when God went to Moses and God told Moses to go tell, to tell the Pharaoh that, that you need to let my people go. Moses' plan was interrupted by God. Not only Moses' plan was interrupted by God, watch what took place here. When, when, when Moses went to him, the, then Pharaoh turned and said, all right, your people are going to continue to make bricks without what? Straw. 
Their plans was interrupted by God. So watch this. Why do we think God is not going to interrupt our plans? Why do we think that we're not going to have hardship on our lives? And God had the Egypt, their, their, their plans was interrupted. And now they got to continue to keep the same count of bricks. They got to do the bricks without straw. They got to continue to struggle and do it. Because God interrupted what they were doing. So he can get the glory out of it. So why do you think that when he that we're not going to get interrupted for his purpose? And a lot of times when we get interrupted, it's not going to be a, a, a smooth interruption as, as we think it is. Because you got to be tried in it and you got to be able to walk through the fire. To be able to hold on to the promise that God placed in you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? He's going to try us, folks, for his good, that all things work together for, for those who, come on now, his good. Not, I, he ain't just doing things just for your good, but he's doing the things for his good. And watch, his good is going to be good for those that see you going through that and still stand strong. And still be, and still have purpose in your life. I know this message ain't a jumping one. It's one that's going to keep you and it's going to bring you to supernatural success. All messages are not going to make you jump and shout, but it's going to make you think to understand what God is doing in our lives for the purpose of those that serves him. For the purpose of those that serve him. And remember, it's not just our lives. What we go through is not just for us to go through. It's to be a testimony for the good of God that we serve. You see, Ephesians 6, Ephesians 1, I'm sorry. In verse 11, it says, In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of, of him who walks or works all things according to the counsel of his will. Do you understand that? What we go through? Listen, it says, in him also we have obtained an inheritance. <laughs> you got an inheritance. Donnie, you don't just have an a, a inheritance that me and your mom left for you. You got inheritance for God. The inheritance that, that you and your mom, we, that we leaving for you is good. But the inheritance that God has for you is greater. So it says, in him also who has obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. The, the counsel of his will. His will is working in you. To get, make sure that you obtain the inheritance that he has in store for you. The inheritance. Look at Job. Job did things. And Job, didn't, he didn't understand a lot of the things that he was going through. But guess what? He asked God some questions. Go to Job 38. Start with verse 4. And, and, Job, and Job asked God questions, and Job wanted to know. But guess what God said to him? Well, look at some of the answers that, that Job said. The Lord said, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. So Job, God, Job was asking God questions, but God turned it back on God, uh, Job. He said, where were you? Were you there when I laid the foundations of the world? I know you're going through something, church. I know that you're going through something. But were you there when I laid the foundations of the world? Do you understand what I'm doing? He said, no, you don't, because I was there alone doing this for your behalf when I laid the foundations of the earth. He went on to say, who determines its measurements? Surely you know, 
or who stretches the line upon it? <laughs> Do you understand what God is saying here? God is saying, I'm in control of everything. He said, you wasn't there, Brother Prince. He said, Pastor Campbell, you wasn't there. When, 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 when I stretched or when I determined the measurements of this thing. And he says, to what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstones? Do you know who, where, how the foundations was fastened? Who laid the cornerstones? God is telling you what he did. So how dare you question him and what he's doing in your life? What's the purpose from God in your life? Why are you question him in these things? <laughs> Watch, he said, to what were the foundations fastened? Who were laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut, who shut the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swollen band when I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors when I said the Lord is saying this when I said this far from you may come but no father and where and here you 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 proud ways must stop the Lord even made the ways stop so how do we, how can we question the purpose that he's placed in us? And we don't know how it happened. And then watch this. I love this one because we use this a lot. And I use it a lot. He says, have you commanded the morning since your day began and caused the dawn to know its place? That it might take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaked off of it? Have you ordained? Have you did that? God, look, he, he, he told you all this other stuff, but then he comes back and asks you another question. Have you commanded your day? When you woke up, have, did you tell your day what it was going to do? How did you not expect to get supernatural success if you don't command these things with the leading of the fulfillment of God that's in you? Let's look at it. He said, have you commanded the morning since your day began? So when you wake up and the day begins before the sun comes up, have you commanded the day before the sun came up? Have you? And then watch this. When you commanded that the, the dawn has to follow everything else. So that means everything else has to fall into place Amen. because you commanded your day. You commanded it because God, number three, I'll skip all that. Number three, God always does what is best. Amen. Because God is always good. God always does best because God is always, say that with me, good. Romans chapter 8. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. God is in the full sovereignty and wisdom for our lives he ordains and allows all things to come to pay in such a way suffering and joy that is his glory is meant to it to to expand our lives through our faith and joy in him he is filling us all the all the earth and joy he's filling us with all the earth and joy to, can, can you phantom that? Can you get with that? Or, or is it just something that's just happened? Write down Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. And I'll read it for you. It says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All that's going to be placed in us. 
if we allow God to work in us. God wants to transform us into the glory given instead of the glory taken. Do you understand that? God wants to transform us into the glory given instead of the glory taken. What are you talking about? Joseph was in a pit and to glory was given. And then when he got out, they understood that, that now he's walking into the glory that was given unto him. He didn't take anything. It was given unto him. So what was the, what's the struggle that you're going through? Did God give you glory in that yet? Instead of you trying to take it for your own means? The glory given. Faith is what, what's needed when God is interrupting us. So we got to have faith Amen. when God interrupts us. So what's, what you going to do when God interrupts? How do you survive when God interrupts your plan or your purpose with his plan and his purpose? We're going to walk by faith and not by sight. We're not going to use these natural eyes. We're going to use the faith that's inside of us to guide us. When God interrupts, we walk by faith and not by sight. Give God some glory in here. In the of a sweet